On Cressman's Business, we're always talking about the value of a dollar, a pound, a yen or a euro. What about the value of an hour? I mean, an hour of time. So, you're 24 hours a day. <clears throat> this is an average of how we uh, start spending our time. Looks something rather like this. And um, the bulk of it is actually sleep, about 30% of the time, and work, another 33%, which doesn't leave a lot of time left. You've got three hours or so for meals, an hour for chores, uh, and, and doing things like that. And you've probably spent up to an hour or two on your phone or other digital device. It's a bit depressing when looked at it like this, but it should be, should be a clarion call to change and do something to get it better, which is why we have Cassie Holmes, a UCLA professor who thinks there is <coughs> a better way to make people happier, and that means we must get more precious with how we spend our time. That's really the problem with all of this. It is the new book that's just come out, Happier Hour. Joining me now is the author of Happier Hour, How to Beat Distraction, Expand Your Time and Focus on What Matters Most. It's Cassie Holmes. Um, look, I get, I get what you're saying, Cassie. I get the idea. <laughs> and I sort of know, I, I appreciate the significance. Now tell me how to do it. <laughs> yeah, I mean... It I appreciate that you appreciate the significance. It's, it is an important one um, because so many of us feel like we don't have enough time to do all that we want to do. And there's this feeling called time poverty, which is exactly that, that we so feel that we don't have enough hours in the day to do what we want to, what we have to do and what we set out to do. And this is a really serious problem because it's so prevalent. We conducted a national poll in the US that found that nearly half of people feel time poor. And it's not just us in the States. Folks around the globe report suffering from this hectic pace of life with too little time. And as you said, our time is precious. Right. And coming Sorry. out of the last several years with the pandemic, um, so many of us are struggling and recognizing, oh my gosh, these hours in our day that we want them to feel meaningful. And so it is this question of how do we invest so that we look back on our weeks and feel that our lives are satisfying and fulfilling, not feeling the stress and unhappiness of feeling time poor. How? <laughs> so there are several ways. The first is to identify for you what are those worthwhile ways of spending. And through that, I suggest time tracking. Researchers that look, do time tracking look at how people are spending their time and how they feel, and they find that on average, people are happiest when they're socially connecting, whether intimately or just spending time with family and friends. And fortunately, on average, people are least happy when they're commuting, at work, and doing housework, which, as you noted, makes up a bulk of okay. their days. All right, but then yes. how... Let's take this device. I'm holding up my phone. Um, is this an evil for time? Is this a time killer? Is it a, a nasty in the sense, even if I'm texting somebody, then yeah. I'm not necessarily communicating. Where do you put digital devices in the time cons consortium? Yeah, and this is with the um, time tracking. It picks up as being not a positive usage of time. I mean, our, our phones are so helpful. It allows us to get things done, to connect with folks. But what it also does is it distracts us. It pulls us out of the moment. And research shows that we are distracted almost half the time, 47% right. of the time. We're not focused on what we're doing. And our phones are a culprit. Even the mere presence of the phone, when you see the phone sitting there, <laughs> it reminds you of all the things that you should and could be doing. And so what I would suggest is that when you are spending time on these activities that are sources of joy, like those social connections, spending time with your family, spending time with right. friends, having a good communication with a colleague, is put the phone away. Out of sight is yeah. closer to out of mind. Um, also, when you're looking to do that deep strategic work, um, getting into a flow state is yeah. absolutely impossible when you're being distracted by incoming pings on your email and incoming messages on your phone. So also during that 
really important time of working, you want to carve out those times as no phone zones as well. So I get it. The, the, the trick now is, of course, to turn these ideas into learned behaviours, because... Um, as Mark Twain famously said, although somebody will tell me it wasn't him, you know, I can stop smoking it, it's stay many times. It's staying stopped that's hard. So I can read your book and get the, 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 the ideas of what to do. It's three months down the road to see continuing to do them. That is, to me, the hardest part. Yeah, well, so there is that first step of designing, scheduling your schedule or designing your schedule your week so that it is purposeful that it's intentional i mean honestly half of the, uh, the half of the way there towards happiness is simply being intentional and with that intentionality you are likely to minimize the amount of time you spend wasting on your phone for instance and increase the amount of time that you're spending on these activities that really matter that social connection that work exercise is something that is so important to do because as a direct mood booster, it helps offset anxiety and depression. Um, yet it's something that we, when we feel busy, we don't make the time for. But by exercising, it increases a sense of self-esteem and self-efficacy. And with that, it lessens your sense of limitation with the resources you have, namely your time. Um, so it's, it is now thinking about yeah. Three months on, as you said, um, once you experience the benefits of it, um, then you see that it is easier to do um, these behaviors. Another thing that you can do to just I, I, remind you I, is to re recognize how little time is left for those things that really do matter to you. Oh, Count oh. yeah. Oh, that, uh, how little time is left. How right you are. We are out of time. Uh, I apologise. Um, but uh, I know what you mean. We'll talk again mid-year, if we may, ma'am, to, to see if I've actually improved. I won't have done. Oh, well, no, no. That's defeatist quest. That's being defeated before we've even got started. Thank you. I appreciate your time.